Hello everyone, today we are going to talk about Codeformer. Codeformer was introduced last year with this interesting paper towards robust blind phase restoration with Codebook Lookup Transformer. And there are few ways to use Codeformer. You can use Codeformer online, if you go into Hugging Face, uh, it's available there, or you can download it from the Codeformer GitHub repository, or if you have automatic 1111, you can use Codeformer within it. So when using stable diffusion, in practice we use Codeformer for phase restoration, for improving a phase, making looking better. This is the website of one of the authors of this, um, of this paper, and if we scroll down we can see that there is a quite useful comparison for face restoration, face color enhancement and restoration and face in painting, which is what you're going to use Codeformer for. And you can see that Codeformer is actually outperforming when compared to other state-of-art methods. So if we look, for example, at these pictures here, if we look at the input, real input, and we look at the result when using DFDNet, Pulse, and all the others, and then we look at Codeformer, well, we can see that the output using Codeformer is way better. And the same is for the others, so both for facing painting and for face color enhancement and restoration. Now, this is not always the case, like there is who prefers GFB gun, for example, but I think that it always depends on the input, right? So you may want to use one or the other depending on what you are inputting and what you want as a result. Something important we should mention is that they found a trade-off between quality and fidelity. So the higher the quality, the lower the fidelity and vice versa. That's why when we usually use Codeformer, for example, we can see this on Again Face, we can see that we always have this Codeformer fidelity, a weight that goes from zero to one, where if you choose zero, you will have a better quality, but lower identity. If you choose one, which is the maximum, you will have a better fidelity, better identity, but less quality of the result. So it's really a trade-off and you will need to try different weights to, to see what's the best for you. Now, the first thing I wanna do is to show you how to use Codeformer on Stable Diffusion Web UI Automatic 1111. When you initialize stable diffusion locally uh, on your computer, you should have all of these tabs, right? And then if you dive into extras here, you should have code former, which is here, code former visibility and code former weight. Now, what you should do, you should just need to upload a picture and then just changing the weights for the code former and pressing generate, you should get an output. I can run it now perfectly, however, I had some issues before and the issue is that I was getting this error here when pressing generate. So it was saying you are open error, SSL certificate verify fail, certificate verify fail, unable to get local issuer certificate. I looked into Stack Overflow, uh, I looked into Reddit, I was looking everywhere but I couldn't find a solution. What I decided at the end to do is to ask ChatGPT4, and it actually worked. So I want to share this with you. The only thing I did here, I said, I have installed Stable Diffusion Web UI on my Mac, but when I try to run Codeformer under Extra, I get the following error, and then I pasted the error. Now, obviously, ChatGPT4 was trained before Stable Diffusion came out, if I'm not wrong, so it shouldn't really know anything about stable diffusion, but surely knows about this error, right? So I could have probably avoided writing all of this first part and just paste the error and it would have given me the solution. Anyway, it told me to follow these steps below. I did follow these steps and I'm telling you that it worked. If you have this issue, you can follow along, otherwise you can go on and skip this part. So let's have a look at this together now. So the first thing to do to initialize stable diffusion is to go into our terminal. I'm using warp. Let's start seeing where we are and dive into the stable diffusion web UI folder. So I'll type CD desktop and then stable diffusion, stable diffusion web UI. Now, ideally what we have to do, we need to just uh, run this, uh, this file web UI.sh. 
but we need to solve this issue. And the first thing we need to do is to go into the VAMP environment, which is where we are running our code. To do that, we type source VAMP bin activate and press enter. And here you should see now this VAMP here. Before we just had base, you can see from here, base, and now it's base and VAMP, right? So now that we are in the VAMP environment, if we go into ChatGPT, it's gonna tell us what to do. So here, it says, it seems you're facing an SSL certificate verification issue when trying to run code former. thank you. This issue is usually caused by a missing or outdated certificate bundle on your system. Okay, to fix this, you can follow these steps. Update your certificates. You can run try updating the certificate on your Mac using the certify package. Okay, let's do that. So I can copy this, pip install upgrade. Okay, and I paste in here. Okay, fine. Then step two, create or modify your environment variable. You may need to set the SSL cert file environment variable to the correct path of the certificate bundle provided by certify. To find the path, run the following command. So let's again copy and paste. And it's giving us this path now. Okay, cool. Let's see what we have to do with this path. This command should return the path to the certify bundle file, which is what we got, okay. Let's go to step number three. Set the SSL certificate file environment variable. To set it for the current terminal session, run the following command. To set it permanently, open or create the blah blah in your home directory. This seems to be a little bit more complicated. I'm gonna do that uh, for my current terminal session. So I'm going to copy this, paste in my terminal. Then I need to change this bit here. I'm gonna remove it. And I'm going to copy and paste this path we got before. So I'm going here, paste, and press enter. And that's it. So now what we can do, we can run our webui.sh again. And let's see if it works. So here I get some warnings. If you don't know what these warnings are and you want to fix some of them or you simply want to know what they are, you can have a look at my video because I discussed them. The link is appearing now on top somewhere. Okay, let's go into extras. I will upload one picture. I will activate code former, like I will increase code former just to see if it works and press generate. Not amazingly, but it works. So now let's see how this code former works. I don't want to resize my picture. I just want to, you know, focus on code former uh, visibility. I'm going to change this picture because I don't really like it. Okay, let's use this picture. Just to let you know that the first time you run code former or GFP gun under this extra stub, it will take a little bit of time to produce the first image because it's going to download all of the weights related to Coformer or GFP gun, depending on what you're using. So it, it looks, yeah, the face doesn't look very good. So I'm just gonna use a Coformer visibility of one and zero Coformer weight. Let's see what happens. Well, I would say that it looks way better, honestly. Like if you look at this, before and after, it's way, way better. Let's try now with 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. Let's see the difference between them. So in this case, it's good, but I think I prefer this one. It's way, way better. But one thing, I think this one had blue eyes, maybe seems so. Let's uh, decrease a little bit maybe and re decrease this as well. So as you can see now the eyes are more blue but the quality is not very good. And this is because of this trade-off I was talking before, right? So if you increase the quality there is less fidelity and vice versa. We can just playing around and see where uh, we find the right balance. <laughs> okay, maybe we want to
surely better than the previous one, but not better than this one. Let's try with GFP gun. So we increase it to one and we remove code former. Sometimes also a combination of both of them can be uh, useful. So in this case, GFP gun seems a little bit better. So it's keeping, you know, the color of the eye. So if you compare, it seems, uh, maybe the eyes, I don't know, it looks a little bit better, but lips looks more natural maybe here. The skin seems better here. Oh, and here, something I didn't notice is that she has an earring, but here no. Let's see the original picture. I cannot really tell in reality. Maybe, or maybe it's the light, I don't know. Let's see a combination of the two, a combination of GFP gun and code former. So in that case, we can use, I don't know, 05, 05, and then we leave this to zero. Let's see what happens. I think it looks good, but the quality is worse than using a weight all on GFP gun or the weight on the code former, in my opinion. So yeah, this is how it works. Now with automatic 1111 and also with Agin Face, or uh, I think that there is also another platform where you can use it, which is Replicate. You can use Codeformer just for face restoration. So uh, if you want to color an, an old picture, for example, you cannot do that. But on the GitHub repo a few days ago, they announced that they have added features for in painting and colorization for cropped and aligned face images. So this is the GitHub repo, code former. What we have to do, we need to copy this link here and then we open our terminal again. And then we need to dive into the folder where we want to install code former. In my case, I'm gonna do that on my desktop. So let's see where I am. I'm going to dive in my desktop like this. And here I'm going to git clone the repo and press enter. This is the link we just copied from the GitHub repo. Now, if I look on my desktop, I have stable diffusion. And then I have this new folder, which is code former, where I have all of the folders you can find also in the repository. So all of this. Now let's follow the instructions. If we go here, it's telling us that we should have some dependencies and installation. And it requires PyTorch higher than 1.7.1, CUDA higher than 10.1, and other packages in the text file named requirements. So we cloned the repo already. Then we need to dive into the folder called CodeForm. So Okay, then we need to create a new Anaconda environment. To do that, we need to, let's copy this, Honda create and conformer and paste. I think we may be able to upgrade this from 3.8 to 3.11, uh, but let's keep 3.8 for now. It's telling me to activate this environment, use this code, which is exactly the same as giving me here, so let's type that, conda activate code form. Okay, cool. Then install Python dependencies. So we need to copy and paste this. Okay, then we need to copy this other piece of code and paste. Then from here, I'm going to install Gradio. So install Q radio. Okay. Then from here, we need to check where we are. We go into demos. So the web demos. And then here we go into again face. And then here we need to run this. So we'll type Python app.py. So this should install all of those. It will take a little bit of time, but the next time you rerun everything, it will be way quicker. So you press here and here you have 
code former, again, this interface is way different from the one in automatic 1111. So from this platform, we can see that we have just face restoration and enhancement, but we don't have colorization, for example. But if we go back to the GitHub repository, we can see that they have added features of in-painting and colorization for cropped and aligned face images. So if we if we go down into GitHub, we can see here some instruction for doing face in painting, face colorization, and so on and so forth. But these are not uh, going to be installed in the platform we've seen before, which is this one. But this code you can see here, they need to be run through the terminal. So what you will have to do is to create a folder where you insert all of your pictures you want to modify. When you git clone this repository here, they are going to give you some input images, which I'm going to use for testing this. So when you are in the code former folder, you can find them in, inside inputs. And then here you have four different folders where for example, the mask face, you see here you have face with a mask on top. So what the model is gonna do is going to restore the face. So let's try this first. How to do this? So first of all, with our terminal, we need to be in this folder here, code former. So let's see where we are. And that's perfect because we are in code former. Perfect. So from here, what we have to do, we go down to their instruction and they have swapped face in painting with face colorization, as you can see here. So they have face colorization by Actually, here you have the in-painting model, and here you have face in-painting, but here you have the colorization model. It's not an issue, but just you should be aware of that, right? So let's try with face in-painting first. So I'm going to take this code here, and I'm going to paste it in here. Why do we have to be inside this code former? Because here we have inference in painting.py, otherwise this code is not gonna work. And then here we need to add the path to the folder which contain our pictures. So in our case, uh, the pictures are, we are going to use must pictures, right? So we are going to use these pictures here, right click on one of them and then get info. And here you can see the path you need to be using. However, you are already in code former here. So the only part of the path that you need to include is this one. So it will be inputs and mask faces. And then instead of this, I'm going to write yeah, inputs must faces and press enter. And now it's going to process each image inside the folder and it's gonna save your results into this folder here, which you can open and you can actually check them. Look at this. It's quite good, isn't it? Obviously it's not perfect, but still. Oh, this is very nice. Like I think it's, uh, let's see how it was before. Look at this, way better, right? So just to make you aware that the first time you do this step is going to start a, an installation process. So it will take a little bit of time, not much. It will be like five to 10 minutes, but then after it does it, it's, it's gonna be super quick. Otherwise, if you don't want to use the path to a folder, but you just want to change just one image, instead of this path here, you can add the name of the, of the image so for example, let's assume that we want to change just this picture here, right? So it's called 00664.png. So we're just gonna type the name and press enter. And in this case, it will just modify one picture. So let's open it. And here you go. Let's compare them again. Seems quite good to me. Great. So this is how to use CodeFormer. Hopefully they will integrate everything inside the main platform and even better, this functionality will be added as well into automatic 1111. And that's it for today. I hope that this was useful and see you at the next video. Bye.